Where should firms be right now as far as their MIFID II related IT overhauls? We're in really good shape. Um, we've done a lot um, working with uh, our prime brokers, um, working with outside uh, consultants uh, to really make sure that you know, we're on target for the deadline in, in January. Do you think that some other firms, maybe your peers and maybe your competitors, should they be at the same level at this point? Or? Yeah, I, my, my understanding is that uh, pe people at different firms have you know, really uh, different um, demands based upon their time. So uh, we spoke about it at the panel earlier that uh, based upon the size of the firms, there's really uh, utilization of effectively the same resources between growth of the firm, so some developer, for, for example, that same developer's uh, utilization or resources would also be used to implement um, the MIFID, MIFID requirements. So it's really, that's really kind of what's going on right now, right? So m my general impression is that, that, that firms are ready and, fir and firms will be ready, but mm -hmm. the concern is you know, to what extent and will this be something that they need to be working on you know, in, a, in a third quarter or testing in a third quarter. And, and how should firms catch up if they are behind on the IT front? I think a couple of ways. I think uh, definitely utilizing the resources that are out there. So there's a lot of consultancy firms that uh, could assist. I think there's a tremendous number of resources online, um, actually, that firms could, could use to, to help them. I think the, the problem is that if firms are behind and firms do need to catch up, it's really difficult for them to make a determination how to prioritize in terms of what to do first, in terms of you know what will take the longest implement as opposed to what could be done quickest. So I, I, I would recommend potentially either using us a council or using one of the large consulting firms or boutique firms to help them get across the finish line. Were there any previous industry deadlines that could help firms as they try to hit the, the MIFID II deadline? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, you know, firms have been working towards this for a while. Obviously, this is the second phase of, of, of MIFID. Um, there are different regulatory requirements based upon where those firms are set up with regard to reporting. So the consolidated audit trail is actually a new requirement that is coming to effect for exchanges this year and for, for uh, uh, brokerage firms, large brokerage firms next year. So there are things that have been happening out there in, in, in the world, um, in particular based upon the market that you're in. And there's a big push for transaction cost analysis from clients. So firms internally are preparing questionnaires and, and uh, various forms of documentation, internal resources and internal reports to actually make sure that uh, they have the transparency and discovery uh, of prices that you know, clients would really be interested in seeing. Okay, so there could be some synergies among all of these regulatory deadlines. I think so. I think, I think th that's a real big benefit of MIFID is that uh, there are requirements that are coming up um, globally, in particular as mentioned, the consolidated audit trail. So you could utilize what you've learned for, from MIFID when you roll into the CAT. And essentially, um, you know, I've seen firms actually have a master data uh, a database in terms of like a master spreadsheet where they come up with the lowest common denominator in terms of coming up with different elements of MIFID, comparing what those elements are compared to the EMEA requirements, for example, which occurred in the past, and, and consolidated audit trail, which occurs in the future and you know, other, other things that they could do to actually make their reporting even better um, and more improved. So essentially it's coming up with, you know, for example, certain fields like client name or you know, customer ID. Obviously that would be a universal field throughout. So it's identifying what universal fields are required from all these reports. So look at all these reporting requirements in detail and determine what the lowest common denominator is amongst those so you don't have to redouble down or triple down on efforts.